afternoon for our webinar using core words to support communication in the classroom with the call core word kit. So the session today is being recorded and it will be available to watch um, or to rewatch on our call YouTube channel very shortly at the end. So today we are welcoming Ken McGregor, who is a principal teacher at Greenburn School in East Kilbride. And Kenna is going to talk about her experiences of using the Call Core Word Kit, which she had on loan from Call a couple of years ago now. And she's going to show us some of the fantastic work that she's been doing off the back of that, using core words um, across the school at Greenburn. So she's going to speak for about 20 minutes or so, and then we should have time for any questions at the end, finishing up about 4.30. So if you do have a question um, as we go, feel free to pop it into the chat and we'll mop it up at the end. Or you can always wait until the end and turn your microphone on if you want to ask in person. OK, so I'm going to hand over to Kenna. Thanks very much, Kenna. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to talk about, first of all, what's included within the Core Word Kit, um, how we got on with it and how it informed some of our next steps. So first of all, what are core words? <laughs> they are the high frequency words that are, make up around 80% of what we say, and they can be used across context and activities, so they're flexible and highly important. Fringe words or vocabulary are the ones that are used within specific contexts, and they're really important in determining meaning. They communicate autonomously and naturally, for all communicative functions across all contexts, we need both. So we'll have a look at the core word kit. So here are some of the resources included um, and some that we borrowed. There are a variety of symbols, um, lots of different visuals and different formats. So there's some for like Big Mac and Switch overlays, a um, couple of different sizes. There are GoTalk overlays as well. And there are communication boards that can be used as is or can be cut out so that you can use the individual symbols. They also have high contrast, which is really useful. There are themed resources, so different activities around the one particular theme, which in this case was pirates, and different technology. So we borrowed the Big Mac with levels, a GoTalk light touch, um, another GoTalk, I think it was a 32, and the alternate spinner and a couple of different bits and pieces and lots of different switches. There's also an essentials toolkit, which is like a little survival kit for all the bits that you can't ever find when you need to, like batteries, Velcro, different tools as well. The sensory story um, had all the props included, so all of the objects, including a switch and a fan, which was really nice, and it had a switch accessible PowerPoint and also instructional guides. So we didn't need to source anything. It was ready to use right out the box and really suitable for different access needs as well. And the science activity was sinking and floating, <clears throat> again, related to the pirate theme, and again, had everything with it, all the objects, instructional guides, um, the visual supports to go with it. All you needed was the container and some water. This one was quite nice. We hadn't actually seen this before, the AbleNet alternate switch. Um, Spinner and staff used it in a few different ways. One of them was to use it for turn taking. So there were photos of the students, another used it with names, and um, it was just like a, a nice, fun activity to, to choose. Uh, there were other things like colours, alphabet, numbers. The one that's pictured is a Mr. Potato Head activity. But what's really nice about this is it's not just um, direct touch access and um, it's also switch accessible and obviously the opportunities are endless. So what we loved about the core word kit was that it had everything that you need to implement the strategies immediately. It's a really comprehensive kit. There were differentiated resources supporting a wide range of access needs and a wide range of communication support needs as well. There were a variety of activities linked to the one theme and the comprehensive instructional guides were really useful. They helped in planning and the target setting, particularly because they were linked to the experiences and outcomes in Curriculum for Excellence. So it gave us a lot of ideas and we got to try out lots of different technology, which in the current climate is 
really, really helpful um, to try before you buy. Despite having quite a long time to try out the core work kit, staff did find that there were barriers. The biggest issue was the time to explore what was there and how to use the different resources or strategies, particularly if they were unfamiliar with it. So moving forward, we kept the two commandments of core words in mind, create communication opportunities and model the use of core words. Along with staff feedback, this gave us some action points. So the Essentials Toolkit, we've got our own. I think we might actually have two now, and it's stored in a communal area. So that includes the things that I mentioned, like the Velcro, batteries, screwdrivers, some other bits and pieces, some tools. And the Core Word Masters, um, we have a shared Google Drive that we use for communication. So there's a variety of formats of visual supports, <coughs> excuse me, um, different grid sizes and for different technologies, different overlays. So that's all there and accessible to staff. And we also have printed versions that are ready to be photocopied in a communal area. The biggest challenge has actually been sharing the information with all staff, and that's just due to limitations with time for training. So to try and overcome that, we've been sharing training and information, signposting, some videos and things just whenever possible and when the need arises. So some of the resources that we have within the bank of materials, um, here are some of the different core word visuals that we have, a variety of different core word boards, um, core word books and high contrast versions. We've got a super talker and some go talks, different sizes within the school. So we've got a variety of overlays to go with that as well. And these are the ones that are accessible to all staff. Creating communication opportunities. One of the commandments, communication opportunities are everywhere, but it can be quite hard within a busy class supporting diverse support needs. So we've used this, I um, should mention that some of the resources that I'm mentioning here will be linked with the slides at the end and there should be a shared drive where you can access these. This is one of them. So Tibble's got a really nice pack of resources that have activities and some example core words that you can use to go with them, but they also have a blank planning sheet. So keeping that with um, the communication opportunities, we were picking specific activities and using this to use specific core words that could be um, used within the activity. And using those, the planning, what an effective way in maximising the communication opportunities is to embed it, plan ahead and embed it and differentiate within activities that we're already using, that we're already doing. So daily activities like your routines, your morning session, it was easier to plan and practice core words within these activities that we were already familiar with and that the children were familiar with. So we've just created and maximised um, the opportunities within that using communication boards, books, symbols, but using the planning form to choose maybe one word or a couple of words to focus on within the specific activity. And then within specific activities as well, so it could be topic based. This is following on from the ideas within the core word kit. Before the summer, um, I picked a topic around a book that we were studying and used a planning sheet to plan the core words that was going to hopefully target throughout the, the topic activities. The bingo um, sheet, very similar to the call one and the nature sink and float. I just created and adapted resources that were similar and um, just inspired from the core word kit. And it was a great opportunity to maximise the core words because it was already familiar from using it with the core word kit. The overlay for the Go Talk came with the core word kit as well, and that was for sink and float. Um, just a little side note, if you are using the Go Talk mixed to water, maybe best just to use it um, slightly out the way or just use the board alone. Just water and Go Talks doesn't go very well. And another little extra here, um, I've included a couple of these in the links. I saw this with the AAC for all. She has fantastic resources on AAC. In the top left corner, she has fringe vocabulary to add on to the Go Talk. So if you have a Go Talk or if you're using boards, it's quite nice to have the core board and the fringe vocabulary at the top. So you can download that from her Teachers Pay Teachers store. On the top right and bottom left, there are some other ones that I had made and they are going to be available to you. 
And again, it's just to try and have the core words available more of the time with some fringe vocabulary as well. And then in the bottom right corner, that was to go with the book that's the Call Scotland shared reading overlay, some core words within the flip top and some vocabulary that was specific to the book. So a big, a big factor that's been helping staff and students communicate with visual aids is to have them accessible and available where possible in the environment. So over the last couple of years, we've been increasing um, the amount of visual aids that we have within the environment. So core boards, posters, um, outdoor boards. And another really nice one is having it on the interactive class board or displayed. Um, you can have it static as well. If you have a core board, you can just display it on the board, but just having it accessible within the environment. And some other ways that have led on from that is to, again, have some a different core boards. Some people have them taped to the desk. We've got some staff who've got them up on the wall that they can be taken off. We've now got additional boards for the playground. Basically, it's just having them accessible wherever possible, having them available more of the time. And it will depend on the needs of the students and what you have accessible to you in terms of the environment, what you can do with it. These are just some examples and ideas. It's not always possible to model language. I'm well aware of that, but having the tools and resources available helps to model and helps staff to model wherever and whenever possible. So we've been, again, using all of these resources to model without expectation of a response. And we encourage a total communication approach where one method of communication isn't superior to another. And we're just using it in a variety of different ways. This term, um, we've revisited the idea of a core word of the week and word of the day. And again, activities and resources that are inspired from the core word kit have been a huge fundamental part of this. And there are also some activities available through Assistive Wears Core Word Classroom, which I'll link in the last slide. Um, and that's around specific words. The, um, if you have a board maker subscription, there are 36 core words with many books and some different activities. We've created um, individual symbols and the Makaton signs and things to go alongside it. And we were focusing on one word per week. I have to admit that in the last few weeks, it's kind of fallen by the wayside because it's getting to Christmas term and it's a bit busy. But the resources are there and it's been really useful in encouraging modelling across contexts and increasing staff confidence in using core vocabulary more of the time. Another useful resource, um, or two useful resources, Tar Heel Reader and Tar Heel Gameplay have loads of resources already there for core words and they are multiple access modes. So it's a really worthwhile um, resource. So to summarise, from using the core word kit, and the activities and resources that have been inspired from it. There are some key benefits. It's a comprehensive kit of resources. There's multiple modes of access, multiple modes of communication, and the sample themed activities can be used as a foundation to create resources for other topics. So basically, it's been fantastic in supporting and encouraging communication in all activities. And what we have are now striving for is our own base core word kit that can then be used in and out of classrooms. Um, I mean, the ultimate goal would be to have one per classroom, but one step at a time. That is the link and QR code to hopefully a folder where you can get some of the resources that I've mentioned. And I think the slides. Claire can correct me if I'm wrong, but the slides will be shared there later on as well. And some links. Project Core, if you haven't heard of it, is a very worthwhile um, website to check out. It has a fantastic amount of training and there are lots of resources um, in a variety of formats of core words um, and core vocabulary. Assistive Wear have got lots of information about core word teaching strategies, but they also have their core word classroom. I'm pretty sure that link should take you to how to register for it, which is free. And it gives you a lot of different resources. For first learning resources, there are some free ones. Um, but if you have a board maker subscription, you get access to all 36. And the Sotelo link will take you to a variety of different resources, as well as the document that I had shown. The document itself will be in the shared folder. 
So that was a bit of a whistle stop tour of the core word kit and the different activities and resources that we have been using, some of them. Um, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I think I'll stop sharing. Great, thanks. Thanks, Kenna. Um, I'll just while we're giving folks a chance to type any questions into the chat, I'm just going to share my screen and I'll show where people can go to just get a little bit more information about it from the call website and I'll reshare that QR code and bit link as well again so people can have a wee look if they want to um, go and have a look at the resources. So if you're kind of thinking, oh yes, this might be something that I think might be useful for our school and I should say that this is um, a tool that is available for schools in Scotland and um, we know that people join our webinars from outside Scotland um, mm -hmm. but hopefully with all of those free resources that Kenna has shared in her presentation as well you'll kind of get an idea and get in a sense of, of what's in the kit um, but you can get some information about the core word kit from our Call Scotland Symbols for All website it's just on the tab um, that is core word kit so if I click on there, you can kind of get a list of what's on there, get a little bit of a um, refresh on what core words are and get a little in information about what the core word kit is. And also that's my email address there at the bottom of the screen. If you are interested in borrowing it, please send me an email um, here at call. We, we've got various options available for you. There may well need to be a wee bit of a wait um, for folks because we do have quite a few um, folk asking for asking for the resources from it. But if you get in touch in the first instance, then we'll be able to give you a give you an idea of how long it might take. So that's the QR code um, and the um, link resource there if you want to go and have a look at some of those resources. Um, I'm just having a look to see if there's anything in the chat. There's not. Does anyone have a question that they want to turn their mic on to ask? We'll give folk a couple of minutes. Katie? Hi, uh, Kenna, you mentioned about resources on Boardmaker. Is there an actual um, file for books, for core words that you've come across? It's within the curriculum section. So if you go to my curriculum, you get the core first learning. And then beneath that, there's a few other ones. But within the core first learning, it's separated into three sets. So each set has 12 core words. Then, so say, for instance, you went into set one and you clicked on the first word, which would be go. It would then bring up three different leveled books um, and a couple of different formats for it for each of the books and some different resources to go alongside that one word. So it's all within the Boardmaker subscription my curriculum section. Lovely, that thanks. Yeah, <laughs> cheers. Katie, I've put a link in the chat that I think should take you to it directly once you sign in with your Boardmaker login. You should, should hopefully take you straight there. Lovely, thank you. Any other questions? It was just to ask, you know, the colours that are used in the core boards that you shared with us, what do the colours link to? Is it the Fitzgerald? key or something um yeah, yeah. it's the Fitzgerald the Fitzgerald key that's yeah that's what the, the I think it's technically the adapted Fitzgerald key but that's right. what they that's what they link to okay yeah. thank you um just give you any information any other questions at all Ken I know you were saying um you know you've kind of showed us loads of the things that you've kind of done off the back of borrowing the core kit so you were you were talking a little bit about how staff getting information was a bit of the barrier to things being used more broadly across the school now that you've kind of had a bit of a space between having the kit and you've started on that journey of implementing it what more widely in your school what are your kind of next steps are you thinking once you've got to where you want to at the minute or are you are you just on a bit of a never-ending journey do you think <laughs> feels like a never-ending journey i think what i would do I, if i had the chance again and had the core word kit again i would definitely make sure that i've got the time not only to show the teaching staff what's available within the core word kit but support staff as well so that every, the whole team because 
I found that maybe for teachers, it was quite a task for them to try and understand what was there, but then try and share the information with the team as well, because sometimes it wasn't them that was going to be leading the activity. So it has made me rethink a little bit of how it would be delivered to like the training and the information, like how it is shared, because it is primarily targeted at teachers. The, the way that I had initially brought it to a teacher meeting and thought, oh, this is wonderful, and ta-da, go and do it yourself. Actually, there needed to be a little bit more of a backing with it. So I would suggest that if you get the opportunity to take the core word kit, if you have that opportunity to share it with a, a wider group of staff, then or team meetings, if you do those, that's definitely um, an option worth looking into. I think for us, um, we are looking at, we're going to be doing another, like keeping with the core word of the week. There are some classes that are doing multiple core words that are balancing multiple communication apps within the one classroom and things like that. So we're looking at more activity based core word activities. So that was like what was within the core word kit. We're looking at with to within topics, having a bit of a comprehensive kit of, oh, great, you're going to be doing space. Here are all the resources and accessible options. And it would basically be like the resources that were in the core word kit you know that it's already all there and available. And that way, well, I mean, that's going to take a long, long time because everybody it will depend on which topics you're doing. But um, the more staff that we get on board creating these resources, it would just be really nice if you knew you were planning something, you had the majority of things to go, like those principal resources to go, ready to go, the PowerPoints ready to go, as well as the switches and Big Macs and Go Talks and things. So I think that's, that's kind of the route that we're going down is getting a more comprehensive kit of resources per topic as well as using a core word of the week consistently. OK, OK. And so if someone was going to start using core words, so, you know, they not using the core word kit, they may be viewing this out with out with Scotland, so it's not an option for them. Have you got a sort of top three of those free core resources that you would recommend people go and check out first of all? Mm, right, free core resources. So, uh, are the resources that come with the core word kit, are they accessible without having yeah, gone if, the word kit? Yeah, yeah, people can get in touch with me and I can mail, mail a link over for them. Yeah, that's absolutely so That fine. is number one then, because that's really comprehensive and that's an awful lot of the resources. That saved an awful lot of time um, and, and creating resources and they're, they're already there and there's thematic ones. So that's been really helpful. So I would definitely say that. Um, another one that I do use a lot is Boardmaker, but that's not going to be accessible to all because of the subscription side of things. So Project Core would probably be my next yeah. one. Again, lots of resources, but there's yeah. just training to go with it. And there's a high literacy focus in there as well. Um, third one would maybe be the Tar Heel resources. Um, they're, mm -hmm. they're interactive and they're highly motivating. And what I've found is the switch accessible side of things is actually really beneficial for all the children. Um, it's everyone who seems to be really engaged, um, not just children who require physical access support. Um, and it's I've been using the Tar Heel gameplay to actually make some little activities with specific core words in them. So each time, basically, it's a YouTube video. There's a pause, and it will flash up with the word, a computerized voice. So it might say more. But it depends on which words we've been targeting or what the video is. I've been doing like look or open or whatever is coming next. So it's been quite a nice way to build in some more core words. So definitely Tar Heel Reader and Tar Heel Gameplay. There's also Tar Heel Shared Reader. They are absolutely worth checking out. OK, thank you. And you said as well that you were starting to do core word of the week or, you know, core word of the fortnight. Have you picked up a program from elsewhere for that or are you just making it kind of based on what your needs at Greenburn are? Yeah, we're making it kind of based on what the needs are. A few years ago, we'd followed it from, well, some teachers have followed it from the ones that are in the core first learning. But what we found was that for for some learners, that was absolutely fine. But for some learners, some of the words weren't really as relevant. Some of the core words maybe weren't really as important if you were to look at a hierarchy of importance. So we've kind of been adapting it as and, as and when, like the needs arise. But we are beginning to put together a bit of a, a plan. There are lots of things out there. I know if you look on Teachers Pay Teachers, there's lots of different um, suggested um, uh, 
suggested paths of using the core words, but I don't know if it's like research based or just personal preference. So yeah, we're kind of winging it, if I'm honest. Yeah, there's I'm just thinking actually there's quite often some nice core word of the week planners on the practical AAC website. I'm just going to post oh, that yeah, into the chat that. as well. I'm yeah, sure yeah, you've some of their things. Um, Carol, Caroline Musclewhite, Musclewhite, yeah. um, she put that's her website, I think, and she posts right. lots of, um, sorry, Carol Zangari, um, she posts lots of nice core, core resources there as well. Okay, yeah. um, great, lovely, thanks very much. Katie, did you have your hand up again or had you just not, had I just not taken it down from your first question? No, I had it up and then I was about to type it in, so um, this is easier. I have two questions. Um, one of them being the, the cover kit, is it all um, PCS or is it different symbols that are used? It's all PCS. It is. Yeah. Is it editable? You get the, yeah, if you get a copy of the files so you can tweak it according to if you use a particular mode or finish or something, you know, in your own setting, you get a copy of the Boardmaker 7 file. Yeah. Um, the next question is, so if you had a, a set of children that are all using possibly different um, software so that their their main pages are different, is it, does it matter what communication board you would use for modelling with if you were doing some of the activities? See, you've just actually touched on something that's a whole other we do not have time for. Um, <laughs> so, when we've got because we have we are getting more and more um, students coming either with their own devices or they're showing preference for other boards or different grid sizes so this goes down the route of looking at a specific language system first which is big chat all over the place um basically there are pros and cons to that and as a school we use td snap and we use pcs um, board maker symbols so we are using I had put out a board, some of which are included in this link, um, a seven by nine grid board and an eight by 10. And it was based on TD Snap because that's what most of our children are using. That's what we're modeling on. But there is a class where one of the students is, may prefer using a different board. And in that case, we would give them their own personal one for modeling on and just show the multiple um, different ways. It's still a lot of trial and error just now, but we're going down the route of something's better than nothing because you can't model on every single board, like a big giant board visually for everyone, not yet. So we're using like the one TD Snap style board to model on, but if there are individuals who are using a different communication software or grid set, then we have a paper-based version to be modeling alongside theirs. Does that answer your question? I feel like I went sideline. <laughs> Great. OK, well, I don't I don't think there's any more questions um, for there, but Kenna, do, do you um, do you want me to type in your Instagram into the into the um, chat if anyone wants to get in touch with you directly? Kenna is a prolific Instagram user under at communicon, I think it is, isn't it? That's the Twitter one and the communication underscore connections is the Instagram. It's Instagram. So yeah, you'll be able to um, catch up with her on there. She's also put really good at posting little mini videos um, of you know the things that she's doing with her learners as well. So it's always just so good to see the things in real life, isn't it? But this is what yeah. it looks like in the classroom. So um, I would encourage you to go over there and have a wee look um, if you want to if you want to have a look. So OK, thanks very much, Kenna, um, for joining us today. Um, and yeah, please do get in touch if you want to find out any more about any of the things that we've been talking about. Um, and thanks very much for coming along to the webinar today, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.